In this challenge, we are going to simulate an AJAX call to get information from a server. This is not a real AJAX call, but the asynchronicity is similar. The function AJAX simulate takes an ID and a callback function as input. Modify the function so that after the database array, it will set a timer that will pass the element of database whose index matches ID to the callback function after zero milliseconds. Create a second function, store data, outside of AJAX simulate that takes data as input and assigns it to the data receive variable already defined. Invoke the AJAX simulate function with an ID of one and the store data function as the callback. Immediately after, log to the console the value of data received. What do you expect it to be? Without changing anything else, copy, paste the console log statement wherever it will log with the info we need. Okay, so let's start by doing some pseudocoding. We want to add a timer and pass an element of the database array. And then we want to execute the callback. Okay, the next thing we want to do is create a store data function. That takes data as input and assigns it to data received. Okay, lastly, we want to invoke AJAX simulate. We want that to be a comment though. Invoke AJAX simulate, and we're going to pass in an ID of one and the store data function as the callback. Okay, so let's start actually coding this. So we want to add a timer. So let's let's do that with set timeout. Set timeout. Okay, and that takes a function that we want to execute after zero milliseconds. And we want to execute the callback inside of this function. And we want to pass it in an element from our database array. And the element we want to pass in will be specified by our argument ID. Okay, so that pretty much does it for AJAX simulate. Let's move on to store data. Okay, so this is a function. data and it takes data as input and it sets data received equal to data. Pretty simple. Okay, so after that we want to invoke AJAX simulate with an ID of one and the store data function as our callback function, which will end up being called here. Okay, so immediately after that, we want to console log data received. Data received. Oops, that's not right. Okay, so what do we expect to happen here? So intuitively, we expect to see Barbara down here in the terminal, and that's because we're passing in an ID of one, which corresponds to this element in the database array. And we're passing in stored data that will be executed after zero milliseconds, and it will set data received equal to data, console log data received, which will be Barbara. Okay, let's see what happens. Undefined, okay. 
So the reason this is happening is actually a little bit more complicated than you may think. So we need to learn a little bit, a little bit about JavaScript's call stack, event loop, and event table. Okay, so JavaScript has a single call stack in which it keeps track of what function we're currently executing and what function we want to execute after that. Okay, so when you're about to execute a function, it is added onto the call stack. Then if that function calls another function, the other function will be on top of the first one in the call stack. Okay, so but what if we want to call a set timeout? This is where things get interesting. So every time you call a set timeout function or you do some async operation, it is added to the event table. Okay, this this event table is a data structure which knows that a certain function should be triggered after a certain event, like a timer going off or a mouse click. Okay, once that event occurs, it sends a notice. Okay, so the event table doesn't actually execute this function and does not add them to the call stack on its own. Its sole purpose is to keep track of events and send them to the event queue. Okay, so the event queue is a data structure similar to the stack, but with a queue. But with a queue, you, you add items to the back and can only remove them from the front. Okay, it kind of stores the correct order in which the function should be executed. It receives the function from the event table, but it needs to somehow send them to the call stack. This is where the event loop comes in. Okay, so the event loop is, constant, is a constantly running process that checks if the call stack is empty. Imagine it's like a clock and every time it ticks, it looks at the call stack. And if it's empty, it looks into the event queue. If there is something in the event queue that is waiting, it is moved to the call stack. If not, then nothing happens. So it's intuitive to think that because set timeout is called with zero milliseconds, it should run immediately. But in reality, JavaScript sees the set timeout and says, I should add this to my event table and continue executing. In this case, it continue, continues executing by calling this console.log down here. And then it pops that code off the call stack. It will then go through the event table, event queue, and wait for the event loop to tick in order to finally run our callback function, which is this function right here. So continuing on with the challenge, we, without changing anything, we want to copy and paste this console.log somewhere that it will log with the info we need. And that will be inside of the store data function right after we set data receive equal to data. Barbara, the desired output. 